Hi Biology, this is just a review video on how to do the calculations on figuring out energy content of food, like the lab we did this week. Uh, I took some, I didn't make up some data, but I got some data, um, and we're going to pretend like this is what you got from lab. You burned a chip, and you found the initial mass was 21.9, the final was 20, which means your change in mass is 1.9 grams. Um, you found the change in temperature, it went from 22 to 46 degrees, so your change in temperature was 27, 27 degrees. And where this, uh, this column isn't on your um, tables, but I wanted to add it to show the difference between the two at the end. This is Q, or the amount of energy uh, that has been transferred. I apologize, this video is a little more shaky than I like. I don't have my camera stand, but it's all going to be okay. Okay, so let's say you also burned a peanut, and you found you started with uh, 26.3 grams of peanut, and, or in hold, but the mass of the holder and the food, you ended up with 22.2 grams of um, the final mass, for the final mass, so your change in mass was 4.1, and then your temperature went from 19 to 67, so it was 40, uh, yeah, 48 degrees uh, in difference. So remember what's happening is you're heating up the food, um, you're lighting the food on fire, and so when that happens, the heat that's coming from the food is going to the water and heating up the water. So when we're looking at um, the energy conversion, we have to think about where it's going, and that's going to help us figure out, like, why do we use the water at all? Water is a good way to um, uh, look at energy changes because it absorbs a lot of heat before it uh, starts to boil, before it goes to, uh, changes phase. So we are going to first look at the chip and think about how much water we use. So let's say for this one we used exactly 50 milliliters of water. We were really careful when we were measuring out the water, and we know by definition that a milliliter is just a cubic centimeter or a gram. So we also have 50 grams of water. Now we can use our equation Q, which is heat, equals m mass of water. I'm going to put a little subscript just to keep us um, in order. Times the specific heat of water, but in calories, times the change in temperature of the water. Okay, so because we are looking at the energy going into the water, we're ca we care about the mass of the water and the uh, change in temperature of the water. So that means the mass of our water was 50 grams. Uh, the specific heat of water is by definition one, and the change in temperature from what we got from the data was 27, oh goodness, 27 degrees Celsius. When you multiply this all out, you end up with 1350 calories. And then we like to work in kilocals, so it's 1.35 kilocalories. So we, when we burned the chip, we got 1.35 kilocals of energy total. So were we done? No, we. this is how much energy was in that much amount of chip. That's not how much energy is in all the chips in the world. So we need to divide, we take that into account by dividing by the mass of the chip, mass chip. So we're going to do 1.35 kilocals of energy went into, where is it, 1.4 grams of <coughs> chip, or sorry, was it? <coughs> So we know that by burning 1.4 grams of chip, the water gained 1.35 kilocalories of energy, uh, and so which means it had to come from the chip, assuming that no heat was um, added to it from the match itself. We divide that out, you get 0 0.710, uh, we don't need that zero, 0 0.71 kilocals per gram of chip. Awesome. So let's look at the peanut, just to be, uh, so we're going to put that right here. 0 0.71, uh, this is kilocals per gram. All right, so what about with the peanut? What if we didn't use exactly 50 milliliters of water? Let's say we use 47 milliliters of water. Well, that's totally fine. That's still 47 grams of water, milliliters. We still use the same equation, Q equals MC delta T. Okay, Q equals M cat, that's how I like to think about it. So Q is now the mass of the water is 47. C is still 1, and the delta T for this one was uh, 48 degrees. So I'm going to multiply this out. I end up with 2256 calories, or 2.256 kilocalories. And again, I'm going to divide by the mass of the peanut, or sorry, the, yeah, the mass of the peanut, the change in mass, so that was 4.1. And you end up with 0 0.55 um, um, kilocals per gram. Yeah, so it's 0.55 kilocals 
of energy were released for every gram of peanut that was burned. So the peanut was not as good of oil source as the uh, cashew was, and that does not matter. It's totally fine. Uh, but you can see that the chip gave us more energy in this case than the peanut did. And this comes back to the idea that not all energy, uh, not all foods, um, just because they have high energy doesn't mean they are healthy for you. So keep that in mind, especially if you're allergic to peanuts. Don't eat peanuts if you're allergic. Um, but this is how the calculations work. Bye.